afternoon, everyone, and welcome. This is Melissa with the StockSwoosh.com, and I'm doing a market review here at the SPY. Pretty amazing bullish move here in SPY today, and I can't say one negative thing about this market whatsoever. It is absolutely perfect. I've been reinforcing that in every market video that I have been doing. The market is bullish. It never was not bullish, and a lot of people have really gotten hurt by shorting this market, which they did in the last two, two and a half months. What utter strength here in the market today? I mean, 100% conviction and no chance of failure that the market will continue bullish all of 2015 unless, again, some unforeseen circumstance happens or world calamity or war. The market is proving how bullish it is. And I did call back at the end of January that February would be a very bullish month. You can count on one hand the bearish days in February. And there's only one week left. In fact, let's just count them. Two. <laughs> Literally. Well, this is really neutral, so this really doesn't even count as bearish. This is a bearish intraday. Okay. This is the first trading day of, of uh, February, February 2nd. One bearish intraday chart in the SPY, and this is neutral. Okay, this is a neutral bar. One. One bearish day in the last three weeks in this month. It's phenomenal. <laughs> it's phenomenal. And what a great swing trade call I made in this back in October of last year. It is continuing to follow through. It's hitting every target. It never did anything wrong. And people would argue with me on webinars and ask questions and just insist the market was coming in. And I received so many different emails from people that the market was crashing. There was so much on the internet about the fact the market was crashing. It was going to crash and preempting the crash. And the market is just a nothing but show strength. The market is getting bought. I mean, it's absolutely getting bought or would not look like this. And it's getting bought by institutional money. And it's going to fall through and continue. And yet people are still short this market that have not given it up and have a stop probably roughly some around 212, 213, maybe even 215 people are giving this buy to rally up to to think that it's going to halt there. But there's no indication of that. There's absolutely zero indication of that. That's a flat out total just crazy guess of something. The reality is that the market's higher. You look at the trend, you read the trend, you read the gaps, you read the price action of the gaps. That's how I determined what the institutions were doing with this. That's how I determined that the institutions were buying the market. That's how I also determined that the institutions were not selling this market. And that's why the market did not fall and is not going to fall because it can't happen without institutional positioning. It's the only thing that moves the market. When an institution buys something or shorts something or sells something, it moves a stock or the QQQs or the SPY. And, and the idea now of this market, it is February 20th after the move we've had this month of going to 300 in the SPY, which is the target I've given for the market this year at a bare minimum, is not even remotely a dream target. Like that's a real target that the SPY uh, is setting up to hit this calendar year. I don't know exactly the timing of that. Okay. But February played out exactly like I thought. Actually, December even played out like I thought in the market. Now that I, now that I go back and look at it. December played out, if you trail through my market videos, played out the way I thought. February is playing out the way I thought. I can't see how March is going to set up yet. I won't really see that until like the next 7 to 10 days of trading. Like really the next week here to see what we do. But what a, I mean, just, I'm flabbergasted. Because it's so great. And it's not all the time that you see things that are perfect. Perfect. There's a difference between perfect and not perfect, okay? And this market is perfect. What's so interesting is many people find this market, not only do they find it not perfect, they find it challenging, confusing, don't understand it, don't know what to do. In my mind, when I look at this, when I see this, when I read the gaps, when I read the price action, when I see what the spy is doing today, my mouth drops to the floor because I say perfect. And I love when I see something perfect and confirming the perfection because you don't get that every day in anything that trades in the market. And when you get it, you have to take advantage of it. And when you get it, it's opportunity. And there's a huge opportunity for the market to continue to rally this year in good, strong stocks you're in, be in the market long, you, you have 401ks, you know, whatever. This is going to be a very, very bullish year if you're in quality stuff. Some people are going to be in stuff that's not quality, and it's not going to work out. Some people are going to be in stuff that is so, so medium, that is, you know, so, so medium. And that's going to end up working out because you get a lift with the market. But ultimately, the best thing to be in really is the market itself or strong stocks, of which you have to identify. 
And what I found out is many people don't understand how to read or identify trends in stocks. They just don't. Let's go back. We'll take this off. Here's where everybody thought the market was going to fall. After the huge top and tail here in the spy, this crash through in here, now we made a lower high. Now we made a lower low. And the market and everyone is convincing another secondary area of a retest in here. The market held the lower low and continued lower, and everyone really thought. And everyone kept shorting this. And people were doing options in the market to short it. And people were actually short. And people were selling out of profits, but it wasn't the people that moved the market, which is who? Who is the only people that can move the market? Power of money institutions. So I just had to do a video on the market today because it's fabulous. It's Friday. The market opened neutral today. Fell, and I said in the room, don't expect this market to go anywhere today. Don't expect it to go anywhere today, even if we show red. I said, in fact, in the room this morning, I remember what I said. I taped the room, but I said, you know what? The market can drop $5 today and still not be bearish. I mean, I actually said that. I didn't, I didn't think that we would drop $5, but I just, I just put it out there to prove my point because Trader Gal asked me, what is the market outlook for today? And I just said, bullish to the end of time. And this is what I keep saying. But I literally said in the room today, even if the market drops $5 in the SPY today, from 209 down to 204, this market is not bearish. Like, like that would do nothing to even, like, not that I thought that would happen. But I just said, you know, the market can drop $5 today in the SPY and have no meaning to this chart. And that is what I'm talking about. That's 100% conviction. And not only that, we, we were red for like a smidgen. And then we flipped and got bought. I mean, this is gorgeous. In fact, the low of the day was set in the market. So aggressive to buy this year. I mean, so aggressive to buy this year. But that's exactly what you could have done. And the only thing to do, because you can't short it. Low of the day was set in the market at 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. And it's 1.30 on a Friday. And the market's just going to keep rallying into the close. And if you didn't buy this on a 15-minute chart, you could have bought it on an intraday chart on the five here. This, this, this beautiful bar at 10.30. You could have bought this here and put the stop under 209. Look at that. I mean, look. This is, again, perfection. Look at that. But people tried to short this on the 15 minute. I could see it. I saw them trying to do it. I knew it would follow through. I knew it would not follow through, and it did not. But anyways, here's where the bar came. Do you see this is people getting stopped out who did short this, who shorted the five minute and the 15 minute of the market. Do you see this? People have to stop here and some also here. And then some also here over the high of the day and you see the bar that happened here. So this is all people getting stopped out, but that's not what's making the lift. I have to be very clear on that. You have the push of the big fat greens and the lift here because you're getting double whammy. You're getting people getting stopped out that shorted the market in here intraday, and you're also getting the buying. But they wouldn't get the lift anyways without the buying. In other words, the lift, the momentum, the push is the buyers. But then you get the real move over it when you have the short covering too to push it. But you wouldn't have this holding here if, if what this is holding because of the buying. This is just, this is just like, I'm like speechless here. Look at, look at this. There was one red day in the market in the month of February, and there's only a week left, and then it's going to be March. And I don't know what March is going to look like, but I did say that I thought we'd have a monster green day possibly this month. Big, 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 big green. Who knows? We could grow like that today. Uh, we could still do something like that next week. We haven't done it yet. I mean, all these green bars in here, that's still not the kind of thing I'm talking about. But when that bar transpires itself, it's going to just be more confirmation for me, except for the fact that a lot of people are going to look at that as actually the market being overdone or time to short or a top. But it's going to be confirmation when it happens for me that the market is higher. Okay. There's something I said in the room yesterday. I don't remember what it was. I have to go back and listen to it about the market. It is all about reading gaps and quality. This week I had a good week, a good solid, a great week. I had a great week this week and I shorted every day. The market was green every day. Okay. I had the quality gaps. I did them. I can read the quality market. It's long. You could have done it. You could have done it on my calls. You know, you have to learn how to read price action in the market to trade it. It's not just looking at moving averages. It's not just looking at pivots. And quite frankly, it's not even just looking at price because it is the 
price of the gap, okay, that is telling me what is going to transpire before it happens. So you look at numbers and price to determine support and resistance, targets, entries, all that stuff. Okay. But you could, I couldn't see what I see and be able to predict something like the market, which I've predicted well for the last couple of years. I predicted this. Even this drop off in here, I said, I was going to hold and it did. That was last year. Anyways, the, the only way I am able to predict what I see in that is going to set up in the price to go to a target or hold a certain area of support or resistance is because I'm reading the gap in each chart, the SPY gap, the QQQ gap, a stock gap, okay? So it is a combination. Is it a combination of the gap and the price action in the gap that gives me confidence and conviction to take the trade and also to see that somebody's going to go to where it's going to go without it having gone there already? In other words, I'm saying numbers that the SPY is going to go to that it is it, not even on the chart. So how am I able to see that? Because I, I can read how price moves and acts in gaps and how it's transpiring here in each gap that's happening in the market. And it's about figuring out the quality of each gap or lack thereof to determine the direction. And the, the market could close over to 211 today here. Look at this. It's 130 and we're 50 cents away from the number. I mean, we could just rally continually up into the close. I don't think there's any way to accurately read the market except for gaps. There isn't. And you know why? And I've, and I've said this, I've been saying this for the last year because someone asked me about what do I mean because they were talking to me, I asked people, what is, what is your strategy? And then they tell me a trade setup, and I'm like, that's not a strategy. You know why the only way to accurately read or predict what price action is going to do or read the trend in something is in a gap is because the, there's only one strategy that actually exists in the market, it's gaps. That's why. The only way to accurately read what something's going to do in a chart is by reading price action and gaps, and you have to know how to do it. And I, and I do. I absolutely 100% do. I know how to do it. That's how I'm such a great trader. But I'm realizing it's because of the fact that there's only one strategy that exists in the market to trade consistently to figure that out, and it's gaps. There really is no other strategy. Shorting double tops and triple tops and quadruple tops, and buying double bottoms and triple bottoms, buying and support, short and resistance, breakouts, breakdowns, climactics, buy a set of sell setups. There's no full-on high percentage winning consistency level to accurately predict anything from any of those types of setups because they're not really strategies. They're setups that you would do in a trade setup. They're not a strategy. The strategic reason for something to do something in a gap is what tells me accurately how to predict what something's going to do. That's how I know. That's how I'm able to do it. And that's what a strategy really is. It's a strategic reason for something. That's how. That's why there isn't there isn't any other strategy that exists in the market. And I didn't know that when I first started out. It was like meant to be that I started to do this where I did it. This will go down as one of the best calls I've ever made so far, career to date. That I've called the market. I've been calling it well. You can watch every video I have on YouTube. I have over 700 videos on there, and many are on the market. However. You'll want to remember Melissa Armo and the Stock Switch LLC because the SPY will go to 300 this year, and I'm the only person saying that. I'm the only educator saying that. I'm the only, I'll even call myself an analyst now because I really am. I am analyzing the price action in the market and gaps. I am an analyst, and I'm analyzing the market, and I'm saying out there to the world on YouTube that the SPY in the U.S. stock market is going to a $300 number this year, and it was going to have a very bullish year. And I'm the only one saying that. People are, some people are saying it's going to be bullish. They're not giving anywhere near the numbers I'm giving. Some people are giving that the market was bullish and it's going to do this like it's doing here now, but they think it's going to break or fall in or turn around 220, 225 ish. But I don't even see that. And I'm not saying we don't pull in. I'm not saying we run immediately up here like to the sky. The market will move and wiggle and jiggle and have momentum. And some of the momentum days, I'll say this one last thing here, will be like this kind of thing here. Because you will have people selling out of stocks or the long or market longs when they feel like they need to get out of something because they're up. But this does not make a downtrend or 
change anything in the trend or do anything here that's made bearishness. But that, that'll, that'll transpire and that'll create volatility. And that'll create some level of panic that may come in and you'll see this. Oh, I remember now what I said in the room yesterday. This is very important. And I said in the room that it was very important. I'll say one last thing here today. One of the very unusual things that you're going to see in the market this year that does not transpire often in anything that's bullish. Okay, I'm just talking about bullish charts. The QQQs, the SPY, the bullish stocks. Okay, it is highly unusual, very unlikely, very rare that you see panic buying. It's just something that doesn't really happen all the time, any given month, day, week, year, in anything that's bullish in a trend. Sometimes you see that when people do an IPO and they're so great at selling the IPO at a certain price that, and, but this all happens before the actual stock opens. Sometimes you see that happen in an IPO offering where there's almost like panic buying where everybody wants to get in. This opportunity is so great. We have to have it. We have to have it. We have to have it now. If we don't get it now, we're going to miss it kind of panic fear thing. But that's before the stock actually, this ticker symbol actually opens and starts to trade. So that doesn't really count for what I'm trying to say here, but I, that's another example of panic buying that does happen in stocks. It's not a stock that's open yet on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange, but it's something that may be announced to open at such and such a date. And they have people investing in it and buy it at a certain strike price. And then you have the panic buying in it of the momentum and the people that are selling to sell the shares to buy it. They, they're basically selling the company and saying, buy this, buy this, you got to buy this, it's so great kind of thing. So you do have that. And there has been some of that in the last few recent years. Some have turned out to be very good for the people that did invest in the IPO. Some have turned out to be not so good. Some have turned out to be not so good and fixed themselves, a.k.a. Facebook. But I will say, though, that normal trading stocks in existence, companies, the market, ETFs, that are bullish charts. I'm not going to talk about bear charts at all right now, okay? I'm just talking about bullish charts. You get very little panic buying Okay, because it just doesn't happen because that's not how people think when something's already rallying or up. However, this year, what is going to set up in the market that is going to continue the rally and make it very boisterous, very fantastic, very aggressive, very continue in a big way is because you're going to actually get people that feel a rush and need an emergency kind of feel to buy. Or if they don't, they're going to miss it. And that will help the rally push through more. That is something that's going to happen in the market this year. And I realized that the other day. I realized it the other day in the room and I was just talking and I wrote it down. And I'm saying it here again. I need to say this in a webinar soon next week, the one I'm doing these signal, where I'm going to be talking about institutional money, which will be very important. That It's so rare that that happens. It is going to happen this year, 2015. And so when you have something that happens like that, you see setting up, you need to take advantage of it. It's like opportunity that you don't want to miss. Meeting someone like me is actually a huge opportunity for anyone that even comes into my vicinity, that comes to a webinar, hears about me, watches a video, or meets me face to face. It's an opportunity to meet someone like me. I'm a very unique individual. I'm a very unique person. And I have a skill set to trade the market in a way that no one on the planet does. And, and you know, it's, it's, I have a gift. However, anyone that meets me has the opportunity to be touched by what I'm saying and learning and teaching and how to trade the market, but also the way that I'm inspiring people to actually do it by themselves, do it, learn it, that they can do it and live through and actually process and realize their own dreams to do it, if that's what they want to do, or just realize their dreams in general. Because if your dream is to trade the stock market, you can make it happen. And actually, if your dream is to do anything, you can make it happen. It's all up to you. It really is all up to you. And there's just so many things that have happened to me that will all be in my book 
uh, if I ever get the time to write it. But I will say that meeting me is an opportunity and finding someone like me is an opportunity. If you happen to be listening to this video, I'm telling you right now, there's something very unusual that's happening in the market. You're going to see panic buying. It may happen once every 20, 25, 30 years in the market. It, it, I, who knows? It may never happen again. This kind of thing is unusual to happen. And it's a gift that I can see it. Back in the tech bubble time, when the market had all the internet stocks and there was a, the sector itself was just getting bombarded, everyone wanted to be part of that. There was all the hype, the excitement, everything, the bullishness, and the market rallied and rallied and rallied and stocks did. This is in the 90s. There was a reason for that, a justification. Again, I'm a price analyst, but people that like to talk fundamentals when analysts say, well, this happened because of this, this, and that, and X, Y, Z. But the reality is there isn't anything here, which is why it's really a gift that I can see that we're doing this. And that, I mean, I'm calling these numbers, they're not even on the chart. But it's because there isn't really an instigator here to specify and put down on paper and say, because of this. Like, there isn't a sector bubble here that's happening in this. And in fact, it's almost like the opposite, which is why people are calling doomsday, because countries are in debt. You look at world economies. I mean, you look at things that are going on in the world, and you say, well, this, this isn't even possible, you know, we could be doing this. So people are justifying things economically saying this seems impossible and we're definitely going to crash but I'm not seeing that and I'm not saying that but I'm saying people see the lack of justification for the continued rally and they also see a justification for the fact that they think it's going to break or fall or collapse or crash but regardless of whatever your justifications are you can make an argument in any direction I don't have to make an argument for anything all I'm doing is looking here and sitting at it and there we have it I see the market open today neutral market actually gapped down a little bit but I called it a neutral gap neutral slash bullish neutral slash bearish either way the market was neutral today Gap down slightly, drop, fell, hard, broke, and rallied and got bought right at 10 o'clock reversal time, major reversal time in the market. It got bought and rallied and made a new high over the last three days. And the market is continuing higher in the spies and the QQQs and is set to continue and rally into the close today on a Friday uh, into the into the third week of the month of this month and is continuing higher. So I don't need to legitimize or rationalize or make an argument. I'm just saying, here I am. I'm reading the gap. I'm reading all the gaps that happen in here. I'm reading the price of it. I'm predicting what it's going to do. And I'm just reading it in live time. Because all that matters is what you see in live, live time with price. You can say to yourself, the justification, the market should be collapsing through the floor of the earth, the country's in debt, whatever you want to say. You can say that about companies too, whatever. You can you can say all kinds of things. You can say that somebody some company is great, you love it, but the stock price is falling. You can make any argument for anything you want, long or short or selling, whatever. But at the end of the day, how do you know what the true value of something is? How do you know really you read it live and you see it and you're predicting it live and I'm just saying live, boom, there it is. There, I don't even have to do anything. It's boom, there it is. This is like not, we can't even, there's no discussion to be had. The market is rallying today. It, boom, it is bullish. It's like, you know, there it is. You can justify anything you want on paper and make any argument for any conclusion. But I don't do that when I make predictions. I read the price action in the gaps. I look at the numbers. I look at how it trades live. I'm seeing it trade live and I'm calling it live and I'm doing it live and I'm seeing it live. And it's going. And there you have it. So, you know, the real, real raw, okay, analysis that I do in live time is spot on, counts, matters to determine what something's doing and far exceeds any fundamental analysis or argument or justification that anyone could put down because ultimately all that matters is seeing it, doing it, and seeing what's happening live and taking advantage of it to make the money. Because if you're shorting this market, you're not making any money here. And that's a fact. And you're really should already be out. And if you're not out, then that's a problem. And I do have one thing I say as well. I say, if the reason for taking the trade is gone, then you need to exit the trade. And if people took the trade because the market made a series of lower lows and lower highs, they should be out of this. And I know that not everybody is. People are waiting, they're giving it more of a cushion, they're giving it more of a room, they're waiting, waiting, waiting. Just, you know, they're gonna end up losing more because the market isn't short, and it is so clear now it isn't a short. And the market's gonna have a big green day sometime. I don't know when, I don't know if it's gonna be next week, but sometime we still are gonna have it because we haven't. And even then, people are gonna think that's the place to short, and it's wrong. The only strategy you can use to determine directional bias and accurately read price is actually in gaps, because it's the only strategy that exists in the market. And I I realized that I think a long time ago when someone asked me and I really have to define it and put it in a definition and create a dictionary for all my terms for everyone that does my class and actually create a dictionary.
Look at this market. <sighs> great call here, stock splish. So have a great day, everyone. Have a fabulous weekend. The Golden Gap course is tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday, and the price of the class is going up as of March 1st. You can sign up for the Bearish Gap course if you want to this weekend now. If you want to sign up before the price increases uh, on March 1st, you can sign up for the one in March and pay for it before March 1st. The price of the class now is $29.99. It will be going up to $34.99 as of March 1st. And if you want to do the bullish gap class, I will be doing that in March. And you can sign up for that for $29.99, again, before March 1st, or it will be $34.99 after that. So have a great day, everyone. Have a wonderful weekend. Email me at melissa at thestockswish.com if you want to learn how to accurately read the market and stocks. Fantastic move here in the SPY. I'll look at it maybe over the weekend to see where we close. Have a great weekend, everyone.